West Bremer Radio, it's now 8.14 and uh, look, uh, this bloke has been in Melbourne, Victoria, Ballarat, freezing his How's Your Fathers Off. Yeah, he is. And he's back in Brisbane, uh, well, in Ipswich, and uh, he's going to tell us about the wo- Australia's richest woman came from this little town, I think, down in Victoria. Oh, Victoria. And uh, he's on the phone now, his name's Harold the H. Ark, Ark, Ark. Peacock. And he's from Ipswich. History out there dot com. How are you, Harold? Oh, fantastic, Danny. Yeah, this is not exactly an history story, but gee, when I found out, I really want to tell you about it. I'm interested. Yeah, so you remember last week I was in Ballarat researching a story that I told about last week. Yeah. Well, I also visited the tiny town, the mm. country town of Coleraine in the Western Districts. Now mm. that's about four hours west uh, to drive from, from Melbourne. Mm. Now, the population at Coleraine is only about 800 people, mm. and yet the local footy team currently sits equal first in the Southwest District Football League. <laughs> but that's not their only claim to fame, because about 130 years ago, the little town produced the world's richest woman. Mm. Now, Sharjah Rubenstein, or better known to you and Damien, as Helena Rubenstein, yeah. who founded the Global Cosmetics Empire. And she's now, an Australian. She was, that's right. Well, she was first born in Poland in around 1872, and as a young woman, she escaped an arranged marriage to an old, rich, distant cousin widower and came to live in Australia with her two uncles, Louis and Bernard, in Coleraine. Mm. Now, they had a house and a shop in the main street, and that's still there today. It's an old wooden place built in about 1866. There's original horse hitching hooks on the front posts, but it's unoccupied. And driving past it, you wouldn't know it was anything special. Wow. Anyway, Helena arrived in town with a few tubs of moisturiser. She later said that her skin was radiant and well hydrated, but the faces of the local ladies were prematurely destroyed and withered by the Australian sun and wind. And so she realised there was an opportunity. Wow. Now, she was living in Coleraine, which is in Victoria's Western Districts and in the heart of the best wool-producing region in the world. Mm. That meant she had ready access to virtually an endless supply of lanolin, mm. with which she could make more moisturiser. Wow. But Helena... But she couldn't stand the smell of the place. She couldn't stand the smell of lanolin. Mm. And so she began experimenting by adding fragrances like uh, lavender, pine bark, and water lilies. And that was a secret. Wow. See, Helena disliked the smell of sheep. But she disliked the place of coal rain even more. And so after five or six years there, when she had a fight with her uncle, she took off up here to Queensland. Wow. Now, her history is a little sketchy, but... What it looks like is she worked as a governess for Captain Charles Pine, oh. who was the aide de camp to the governor of Queensland, Lord Lamington. Oh. Now, of course, it was under his watch that Lamington was invented. And it's quite possible that Helena came to Ipswich and Toowoomba a number of times with the vice, vice regal visits back then. Now, Helena, after being up here in Queensland, then moved to Melbourne where she opened her first store and ultimately became the richest woman in the world. Now, oh, wow. here's a strange twist in the story, Danny. Yes. You see, because of Helena's dislike of the town of Coleraine, mm. in the charter of her Helena Rubenstein company, yes. it was decreed that no store in Coleraine could ever stock her products. Mm. You know what? No, no store ever has. Oh. In fact, this week... I checked in with Michael, the owner of a local pharmacy, mm. and his shop definitely does not stock Rubenstein products at all. And so mm. I suspect the ill feelings between Helena and her original Australian hometown are very mutual. And Danny, you know about Kerry Packer's family connection to Ipswich. I told you yeah. before about his mother's Bullmore family here. Yeah. But who would have guessed that while I was down in Victoria last week and out in the country, that someone like Helena Rubenstein came from a tiny little town like cold rain in Victoria. I just had to tell you about this because you just never know where the history is coming from. Helena Rubenstein is so famous around the world. It's unbelievable, isn't it? And just took a punt on something she had a, a thought about and became famous. Yeah, well, she saw all these wrinkly women. 
all the wrinkly Australians around her. So <laughs> she saw an opportunity. Oh, so what was the rad saying? Uh, all Aussie women are wrinkly. Get some Helen Helena Rubenstein cream on your dial. Now, mate, you put these on historyoutthere.com. You've got all these stories. I'm going to sneeze. Do you mind? <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, bless you. I couldn't help that. That was, uh, we don't have a dump button. Is that a dump button there? No, that's a mute button, so that would have saved you. Oh, it works? Yeah. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, good idea. Anyhow, we're being real. This is real radio. So, mate, what was it like down there in Ballarat? Oh, look, it was actually very good because uh, I met a number of our listeners. And so, Danny, I want to give a shout out to oh. Rowena, who is listening right now. Now, this week, Rowena gave me around 50 gramophone records from an old farm shed. Oh. But when I was coming back, you know, I had a bit of trouble getting the records through airport security. Really? That's because they tested positive to explosives. <laughs> and so it took me about 45 <laughs> minutes to unpack everything and explain my way out of it. You oh, think, the, there, there must have been explosives oh, in the shed where the records were stored oh, for the last so hundred funny. years. Ago. So he's a bloke in customs. I'd, they should put you on that show. And we, you, you, mate, mate, they're just records, mate. All right, okay, mate. No, mate, we can find this. Expl- oh, that's so funny. So it, was it hard to talk your way out of it? Well, they did uh, unpack everything and start examining with a, with a fine tooth comb, and uh, I did have to explain where it came from. I, Danny, I think they uh, either recognised me off your show or they just oh. thought I had an honest face because eventually oh, I got they, through. They probably listened. So, it was, where's Rowena? What area is she in? She's down in uh, in Hamilton, just near Coleraine in the Western Districts, Victoria. You've got listeners. All over the place, Danny. Far and wide, uh, and she was she was really keen to preserve that uh, that history with the gramophone. Rowena, you need to get online and do your arc, 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 flapping your hands and your wings and your arms, and send it through to historyoutthere.com. dot com. Another good one, Harold the H. Arc, arc, arc. Peacock on history out there on West Bremer Radio. I tell you what, I enjoyed that one, Dad. I did too. Is yeah. uh, Helena? And uh, can you believe Rowena? <laughs> Well, yeah. isn't that a good how it all rhymes too? Helena and Rowena. It does. Yeah, I'm impressed. You better get some of that Helena Rubenstein cream too. Are you saying I'm wrinkly? Never said that. Thanks, Dean. <laughs>